We continue with taxes and elasticity. Previously, we talked about taxes and the burden on consumers. It's a burden on consumers if the demand for the product is perfectly inelastic. It's a burden on consumers if the demand for the product is perfectly, if the supply of the product is perfectly elastic. That is consumer situation. Now we're going to producer situation. For producers, where the tax is set falls entirely on producers. One, producers bear the whole tax burden if the PED of the product is perfectly elastic. When I say perfectly elastic, it means there's a significant change in the quantity demanded as a result of a change in price. Which means as soon as the price increases, consumers will stop buying. So the tax body would not go to consumers because consumers would not pay for such products. One of the reasons why we could have a perfectly elastic demand is because we have a lot of substitutes. You know, when it was perfectly inelastic, we have no substitutes, so we don't have any other choice to make. But if it is perfectly elastic, it means there are different choices for consumers to make. So if you are increasing your price, I just go to other businesses to buy from. Do you get the point I'm making here, please? So instead, if the supply... If, if the supply demand, you see on demand, yeah. Not demand, not supply. Not supply. Demand is perfectly inelastic. If it is perfectly inelastic, the burden is on consumers. If, if it is perfectly elastic, if demand is perfectly elastic, it means we cannot increase the price. Hello, be here, please. If the demand is perfectly elastic, it means we can't change the price. One of the reasons why we might not be able to change the price of a product is that there are a lot of substitutes. So if product A, B, C, D, E are competitors, if product A increases its price, I could switch to product B, C, D, or E. So that means the demand for such product is perfectly elastic. Well, in perfectly elastic, in fact, if it is inelastic, it means I am unable to switch from product A to B because we only have product A available. Do we get it now or not? Yeah. So if it is perfectly inelastic, the shoulder of the shoulder of incidence goes to consumers. For perfectly elastic demand, the burden of incident or the burden of tax or the tax incidence goes on producers. Because at that point in time they cannot increase the price. That is perfectly elastic demand. The second situation is in perfect, perfectly in a perfectly inelastic supply. It is perfectly inelastic supply because no matter what the price is, producers are unable to supply more. Please get the point here. Perfectly inelastic supply comes as a result of no significant change in the quantity supplied as a result of a change in price. So irrespective of whatever the price is, producers are unable to produce more. Do you get what I'm saying here? It is perfectly inelastic. Supply becomes perfectly inelastic if there's no significant change in the quantity supplied as a result of a change in price. So if the price changes, increase or decrease, producers cannot produce further. One of the reasons why they might not be able to produce is they don't have the spare, the spare capacity. So the price increases, but we don't have places, we don't have equipment to produce more. We won't be able to produce. Another reason is the time between it. If it takes time to produce a product, irrespective of what the price is, we won't still be able to produce it. Example is coconut. You know coconut, right? If the price of coconut increases now, we cannot still produce or plant coconut and get it tomorrow. It's going to take a long period of time. So the price elasticity of supply for coconut is what? Perfectly elastic. Inelastic, sorry. Because we cannot produce irrespective of the price. Do we understand the two situations now? So the two situations will bring about a burden of tax incidence on producers. The opposite of on consumers. On consumer, it is, it demand is perfectly inelastic. Supply is perfectly elastic. For producers, demand is perfectly inelastic. Supply is perfect, uh, demand is perfectly elastic, supply is perfectly inelastic. Do we get it? So I'm going to use the graph to explain anyway. So look at the graph here. For perfectly elastic demand supply, it means whatever the price is, we cannot still change the quantity supply. As a result of that, we cannot increase the price of the product. So it means whatever price we charge, tax revenue will be paid by we, consume producers. When the tax burden is on consumers, we can increase the price from P to P1. The tax revenue comes here. But because we cannot increase the price based on the fact that the demand for the product is perfectly elastic, it means we cannot change the price. The price will continue to remain the same. So whatever the tax increment war is, it will be paid by producers. That's why the price is not increasing here. The price would have increased if 
the tax burden is on consumers. But the tax burden is on producers, which means whatever price charged, it will continue to be the market price. We can't change the market price because the tax burden cannot be paid by consumers. On the other situation where the tax burden is on consumers, we can change the market price because we can increase the price. But here, whatever happens, the price remains the same. The tax incidence, but to be paid by producers, the suppliers. Do we get it or not? Are you here? Tax increment, there's a tax burden, which means tax has to be paid for production or for consumption. But who pays this tax? That's where we're going. Based on the fact that we're talking about producers paying the entire tax or the whole tax, there will be two situations about elasticity. The first situation is demand being perfectly elastic. The second situation is supply being perfectly inelastic. So both situations put producers into a disadvantaged position because they cannot increase the price. So the price will remain the same if they really want the market to clear. Because this is a price consumers are willing to pay. But there's a tax incidence. There's an imposition of tax by government, which has to be paid, irrespective of whatever the price they are charging. But they won't be able to increase the price because the tax burden is on them. So they take the tax burden as part of their cost. Do we get it now, guys, or not? So that is the situation. And for demand also, it is inelastic. Perfectly, there's nothing we could do about it. Irrespective of what the price is, we cannot charge higher. So the price will still be the same. The price will be the same in supply. The price will be the same in demand. Though the price is supposed to change. But for the fact that consumers are not willing to pay further, we cannot change the price. If we really want to sell. If we really want to sell. That is why we have perfectly elastic, perfectly inelastic. Perfectly elastic because if the price changes, we would never buy. Perfectly inelastic based on supply is the price changes, but we cannot produce further because of time, because we don't have spare capacity or we don't have the raw materials. So if the price increases, based on the law of supply, the higher the price, the higher the quantity of supply. We can only supply if we have the raw materials or resources. But if we don't have it, there's nothing we could do about it. So that means the PES for such products is price inelastic. We cannot increase the price, despite the fact that price has changed. We cannot increase the quantity, despite the fact that price has changed. So that is the situation about the entire tax going on producers. It goes on producers again because the demand for the product is perfectly elastic. It's on producers because the supply of the product is perfectly inelastic. Is it clear now, please? Yes. Thank you.